Things are looking new around here, and that's because of our all-new Floor Drone Spy podcast. I'm excited to say things have officially begun, and today we're covering all things ACSL Soden. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Florida Drone Spy podcast here. Today, we're talking with Tyler Ackerman of ACSL. Tyler, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the ACSL company? Yeah, my name is Tyler Ackerman. I'm the manager of channel operations here at ACSL. I've uh, been in the drone industry for eight or nine years now, uh, doing sales and business development stuff for a couple different companies, but have been with ACSL now for a little over a year. And yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to talk to you. Can you tell us more about the ACSL company and where the Soten came from? Yeah, absolutely. So ACSL is a, a Japanese company. Uh, we're, we're based in Tokyo, been around since 2013. Um, ACSL actually stands for Autonomous Control Systems Laboratory. Um, so that's where we get the, uh, the ACSL letters. But um, yeah, we've been around since 2013. Soten uh, was developed back in 2020 as part of a grant project in, uh, in Japan. Um, and then since then, we've come to the U.S. market, obviously, um, back in 2023, and have really kind of ex expanded our channel network here um, in the last uh, year or two. So, yeah, really excited to bring the Soten to uh, the end users here in the United States. And I understand you guys are doing that in a partnership with Yamaha Motors. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so Yamaha is our, our manufacturing partner. Um, so actually on the, the body of the drone itself, on one of the arms, you'll see uh, Yamaha's logo. Uh, so yeah, they're a manufacturing partner. We're really excited to, to partner with them on that. Obviously their, their quality is top notch and um, you know, a very reputable name. So um, we're really excited about the partnership and um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a name everybody can trust for sure. So that's, that's exciting. Yeah. And they really are a great partner. I know that my nephew still has his uh, motorbike that I had when I was a kid uh, handed down to him so that it lasts forever. And um, can you tell us, you know, why it's called the Soten? Yeah, so Soten in, in Japanese actually stands for for blue skies. Um, kind of our tagline is is blue skies ahead. So that's where we get the uh, the naming of Soten. Can you share some experiences you've had with some personal experiences flying the aircraft or any kind of um, operations that you can talk to them about? Yeah, I mean, I think just in general, it's it's a really, really well flying aircraft. Um, it uh, the, the flight dynamics are great. It flies very similar to a lot of other aircraft on the market. But um, I think people will be uh, be pleasantly uh, surprised with, with how great it flies. And, and it's got some some pretty cool features that I'm sure we'll get into here in a little bit as well. You know, I've got a chance now to fly it for a couple of months, flying around the parking lot, doing some missions with it, getting some uh, real field experience. And I think that's great to get out. And now with some of the new sensors, you know, there really is a, a great aircraft. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, the base aircraft itself. Tell us about the stats of the aircraft. Everyone's going to ask us the same questions they always do. How far, how fast, and how long? So let's go ahead and address those first. And then tell us about the aircraft itself before we get into the sensors. Yeah, for sure. So um, the Soten is a it's a small foldable aircraft, so it's a little bit bigger than a Mavic size, but it does fold up nicely. It uh, it's got a flight time of about twenty five minutes. Um, it'll fly uh, range wise two and a half miles is the spec. Um, obviously, very dependent on the area you're flying in. Uh, it's got obstacle avoidance on top, front, and bottom. Uh, and then we also have a couple different controller options. We have a smart controller that we call Tenso. We also have a standard controller. Um, then, as you mentioned, the, the payloads is the really interesting thing with Soden because we have a, a swappable payload system. Uh, so you can swap in different cameras uh, super easy. It's you know one touch of a button and you can click in a new camera. So uh, that's kind of the unique differentiator for Soden that we're really excited about. Yeah. And, you know, really, it is a great aircraft. Now, you have two different remote controls for it. You have the basic remote and the Tenso remote. Can you tell us about the difference between the two remotes and what the pros and cons are of each? Sure. So, yeah, as you mentioned, um, when we first came to the to the market, we had the standard controller, um, which um, is just a, a base controller that you can add a device to a, an Android device that you can uh, view that live stream coming in. Um, obviously, some some early feedback we heard was, you know, hey, we'd like a controller that has a screen built in just so you don't have to bring that that secondary device. Um, so, you know, we listened to that feedback and we came out with the Tenso smart controller, as you mentioned. So, Integrated screen, um, it's it's about a thousand nits, so it's super bright. So you can have it out in direct sunlight and still be able to see that imagery coming in. Um, has some customizable buttons as well that you can uh, you know customize based on your workflow. And then um, you know really important aspect as well, it's got a um, a video out. It's got an HDMI out port, so you can you know take that imagery that's coming in, put it up on a, a larger screen, or 
or send it out um, through whatever means necessary to uh, to live stream as well. So, yeah, the the cool thing with both of those controllers as well is you can actually link three of them together um, with one aircraft. So with Soden, you've got the ability to hand off control back and forth. So it can be a combination of standard controller or Tenso smart controller. Um, you can have a, a pilot and a visual observer um, and be able to hand those controls off back and forth. So um, that's a just a cool feature that we've got as well. And that really is a great feature to have. I know that in the past, I've done that with had multiple controllers with one aircraft. And we've taken one controller, put that at the command center, have another controller out in the field with the pilots, have a visual observer who has one controller, a pilot who has one controller. You can switch back and forth who's actively flying the aircraft. And then also have command actually watching the aircraft on that HDMI feed. And that way they can see that. And then a live stream that HDMI feed. They can get those HDMI captures drop that right into the Teams, Axon, or whatever system that they have for the live streaming. So that really is a great feature to have available. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head there. And I think, you know, another kind of interesting use case, we've seen some, you know, customers in an in inspection type setting, um, just having multiple operators out there where, you know, if you're around critical assets that you need to get close to, just to be able to hand control to someone who's got a different point of view uh, to maybe be able to, to capture that image that you need. Um, it, it's super helpful to have that that uh, that capability. So, yeah, I can say from personal experience, it really has power line inspections and stuff. You have the guy that has the other side. Sometimes you can't see it at all, really, or you can't get that perspective of where it is in relation to something. But your visual observer, he may have the perfect perspective. You know, now the aircraft is an aerial platform. It's not just a UAS system. Can you tell us about those four sensors and break those down individually for us? Sure. So yeah, starting with uh, with our standard payload, uh, the standard payload is going to be included with with every SOD that you purchased. Um, so it's a 20 megapixel mechanical shutter. Um, it's a one inch sensor. So perfect for you know mapping, photogrammetry, um, some inspection use cases, that sort of thing. Um, from there, we've also got a, a zoom payload that's a two and a half times optical, ten times digital zoom. So 25 x zoom there. So if you got that use case where you really just need a zoom payload, that's an option. Um, we also have a multi-spectral payload, so it's a three-band multi-spectral. Um, so those ag use cases, uh, especially those scenarios where you need a, a multi-spectral solution that's NDA compliant, there's not a, not a ton of options out there. So we're excited to have that one. Uh, and then finally, our newest payload, uh, we call it SAMO. Uh, it's our high-resolution thermal payload. Um, it's a 640 by 512 radiometric with a 64 megapixel optical camera. So it's actually a FLIR Hadron sensor, so super familiar name, but um, you know, we feel like that one's going to be really, really popular in the public safety market. And um, like I said, it's our newest payload, so we're, we're really excited to get it out in the field. Yeah, that Hadron sensor really is a great sensor we used on several aircraft. And uh, it is radiometric, so you can do thermal mapping with it. It's got the 64 megabyte camera, which is great for mapping as well. So, And then you got the zoom lens as well, or the zoom ability, digital zoom. And that really is a great sensor. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, uh, be a game changer for us. Um, like I said, that when we came to the market, um, you know, we didn't have our, our thermal camera that we previously had was a, was a 320. So we're excited to get this high resolution one out there. And um, like I said, I think I think it's going to be most popular in the public safety uh, sector. But it's got a got a bunch of different use cases. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be a good one for us. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting some testing done with that one. We're going to go out to, with Fort Myers Fire Department and uh, do some testing as well with that. It'll be really fun. All right. Can you tell us about the basic bundles now? You've got several bundles as well. Break those bundles down and tell us how, they, uh, how they're marketed. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got kind of a package to, to fit every customer. Um, so it kind of starts with our basic bundle, which is, you know, generally speaking, it's kind of one of everything just to kind of get you started. Um, from there, we move up to our, our mission bundle, which is going to include some extra batteries, a multi-charger, uh, just so you can stay in the air flying continuously. Um, and then from there, we kind of move into more of our specialized bundles. Again, with, with these different payloads, we can kind of build packages to, to fit a bunch of different use cases. But um, we've got our survey and inspection bundle that uh, is going to include that standard payload uh, for that mapping photogrammetry use case. Um, but it's also going to include the Tenso smart controller, as well as all the extra batteries that you need. Um, and then we've got a, uh, a multi-spectral or, or an agriculture bundle. So that's going to include the standard payload. It's also going to include that uh, that specialized multi-spectral payload. So you've got two options there for that ag use case. Um, and then we've got a thermal bundle um, that is going to include that that new payload that I just mentioned, the SAMO high-resolution thermal. 
again, also going to include that standard payload as well. So um, you know, all that said, we've got a bundle to kind of fit uh, fit every customer, but then you can obviously you know purchase payloads and extra controllers, batteries, all that stuff separately as needed. Um, so we can we can build you a package to to fit fit everybody. And I'd like to thank you for that deep overview of those aircraft and going through each one of those packages for us. The aircraft is an NDA aircraft, and that is approved for Florida use, as well as many other states that are limiting where those origins of the aircraft come from. Now, with that said, what can we look forward from ACSL and what's coming in the future? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, we, we've got a lot of exciting things coming. Um, you know, one thing that's, that's really important to us um, back from when we, we started and came to the U.S. market, we really wanted to capture as much feedback from the end user as we could so that we could continue to develop, continue to come out with new things that are, are going to solve, you know, end users' problems out in the field. And so, um, you know, our most recent kind of upgrades, the, the smart controller and the new thermal payload, uh, we've got some RTK capability coming later this year. Um, you're going to continue to see um, improvements to the UI and, and uh, our flight control um, application. So, you know, we're, we're taking all of that feedback as more and more of these units are getting out in the field and uh, we'll continue to make improvements, you know, live streaming capability, some of that, that kind of stuff. Um, and then from a hardware standpoint, um, you know, we've got some exciting things coming in the future. So uh, definitely stay tuned. And the aircraft is an NDAA approved aircraft. Can you tell us more about the NDAA, the background of that and the security features? For sure. Yeah. So being manufactured in Japan, um, everything is NDA compliant. So we, we fall into that category and that, that goes for all of our you know, components and accessories. So, you know, if that's a requirement um, for your company or agency, um, we're definitely a, a good option. And, you know, we feel like it's an important time to, to have more options in that, in that category. So um, yeah, we're excited to, to bring another option to the U S market, but all that to say, we're fully NDA compliant and uh, all good to go there. Yeah, and it really is hard to find a good, solid aircraft that's NDA compliant. And I really do believe that this aircraft is going to be a game changer in that field. It really is one of the few aircraft that I feel comfortable flying. It's very dependable. Uh, anytime I go out to fly, I don't have these arbitrary issues with it that I have with a lot of the approved aircraft. And it's just kind of a pleasure to fly in general. But Things do happen from time to time, and um, everybody has had at least one aircraft in the in the trees. So, what happens with ACSL, and what is the process for repairs? Yeah, great, great question. Yeah, we're you're not a drone pilot unless you you crashed one in, in your time flying. So, um, we know that that kind of stuff happens. And yeah, I mean, all that to say, you know, on the support side and, and repair um, uh, side of things. All of that uh, is based here in the United States. Um, so we have a process that you can go on and, and submit a repair ticket. Um, we'll take that aircraft back, um, you know, diagnose what's wrong with it. Um, if it's something that's gonna take a little bit of time, we'll, we can always do a, a swap and get, get another aircraft in your hands quickly just to, to minimize downtime. Um, <clears throat> and that's really, you know, kind of a, a two-tiered approach. We've obviously got dealers like, uh, like Florida Drone Supply who can you know, help support from you know, uh, technical questions and things of that nature. But if it's something that you know, needs to get escalated to where we actually do need to do a repair, uh, the main thing is that all stays right here in the United States and, and goes directly to our team. Um, so yeah, we're, we're happy to have that capability. And we do encourage customers to reach out to us if they have any problems. You know, let us be your first line of defense. Call us up at the 8558-DRONES. Then I hit technical support, you'll get me directly. And I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and do what I can to make sure that you get the technical support you need. If you have a repair issue, I haven't had to deal with it yet with the Soton, so you can might be the first one, but uh, hopefully not. And uh, send it to me, give me a call, let me know what's going on. I'll get you the repair labels you need. We'll get it sent back to them, and I'll help hold your hand through the whole process if needed. And um, with that said, is there anything else you'd like to add? I think that's it. I really, really appreciate the time. We appreciate the partnership. And um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me today. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so we can do more content like this in the future. If you have any questions or if you want to add the Soton to your fleet, send us an informational email at info at floridronesupply.com or give us a call at 855-8-DRONES. And as always, enjoy your flight.